Throughout the ages, the only opportunity for disadvantaged groups at the bottom of the social pyramid to improve their lot was through education. Unfortunately, Cambodia's educational system has been of little use to helping the poor. According to official data in 2010, about 22.4 percent of the population is illiterate, including 66 percent of children under the age of 15. In addition to the lack of teachers and other structural factors, most of the illiterate children come from impoverished families, and they simply want to work to share family expenses. This child bangs a piece of metal to happily signal the start of school. The sound of this old wheel being struck reveals the excitement that many of these children are feeling. While these school buildings are old and the environment poor, each of these little heads is quite clear. They're happy to attend school. Those under the age of 14 in Cambodia account for about 5 million people. Some 40 percent of this population live under the poverty line. And only 6 out of 10 children have graduated from elementary school. Previously, parents want their children to help on a farm or at home or help with the housework. Later, they gradually learn that the importance of education and sending their children to school. Education was the only way for the poor to improve their standing. But during Cambodia's civil war, intellectuals and teachers were massacred, causing a major rift in education. Finding teachers here is very difficult. This is a poor village and we made an appeal to officials to express our needs, but we weren't able to find someone that could meet our expectation. In addition to using limited resources to teach, these teachers also have some worries. Take, for example, the case of a certified teacher with 27 years of experience. In 2000, the monthly salary was just 25 U.S. dollars, but it slowly increased to 200 U.S. dollars in 2017. If you calculate everything and add it up, earning 200 U.S. dollars a month is not enough, as raising a family costs a minimum of 500 U.S. dollars. Before the public school pay didn't come on time, sometimes it would come on the fifth of the month, and sometimes it would come at the end of the month. It took about two years for any improvement to be made. This has led some teachers to seek other opportunities or ways to become self-reliant, even charging students extra tuition fees for extra lessons or private school courses. Cambodia's education system faces a congenital structural problem with a high student dropout rate as many find it difficult to concentrate on school. But in Siem Reap province, an NGO is trying hard to reverse the situation. From the computer mouse to the laptop and even the fans, everything was provided by Taiwan. Even this thatched classroom was donated. Since the start of 2010, the Taiwan Exquisite Culture and Education Association launched the Cambodia-Taiwan Education Program to raise funds for school-aged children in Cambodia. If we talk about international service in Taiwan, most say that there are so many poor people in Taiwan with the economy being so bad, so why should we talk about helping foreign countries? Now we talk about corporate social responsibility, and in fact Taiwan has received so much foreign aid in the past, that I think we should need to give a little back. Where are you from? I'm from Cambodia. How about you? This program provides professional teachers free of charge to rural children for a 12 to 16 week course in Chinese, English, and basic computer education. These are the three important skills that can help in the Cambodian employment market. Over the past seven years, some 13,563 people have completed their studies and improved their economic conditions. I think computers are difficult and it is hard to have this opportunity to learn. Afterwards, I hope that I can go out and find a job. 
Now, most of the better jobs require computer skills. Some of my students have gone on to become teacher, and some have gone on to work in restaurants or hotels. If not for the people of Taiwan, then we will not be able to learn about computers and wouldn't have any particular knowledge about this subject. No one is perfect, but practice makes perfect as these local citizens are hoping to overcome the tragedy of their past history. Many are simply waiting for a chance. They hope that Taiwan's skills and strengths can help these Cambodians become the masters of their own future. MIT is not just a slogan representing quality and trust, but also a way for many to have a potential lifeline to escape from poverty. With the help of Tsuji, Taiwan's Council of Agriculture has been providing rice to people in need in different countries for many years now. This year, Tsuji has held three rice distributions in two districts in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, benefiting more than 2,000 impoverished families. The rice from Taiwan has arrived in Cambodia in large container trucks. They will be distributed to residents in Kantar Kork and Kaminchi of Phnom Penh. With sincere hearts, let's pray for people in the United States, Mexico and India, since they are facing disasters now. Besides delivering their best wishes, the residents also make donations to help those in need. During the event, Suji volunteers taught the residents to recycle resources. This not only protects the environment, but also helps people in need. I've learned that natural disasters have taken place in many countries. I want to wish them well. Thank you very much. This is the third year that the residents in Cambodia are receiving rice donated by Taiwan's Council of Agriculture. Some of the recipients even bring their coin bank to be donated as a way to reciprocate. Last year, when I came to receive rice, volunteers encouraged us to save our coins. I've been doing this for the past year, and today I've brought the money here to help those who are less fortunate. I am very proud to be able to help my fellow countrymen. Thank you, Zhiji, for the love. Zhiji has carried out charity works in many countries, and the poor in Cambodia have also felt this love. The three rice distributions benefited more than 2,000 impoverished families, helping them with their daily living as well as enriching their minds.